Hi, so an overseas nurse who has been in the UK for five years has recently applied for indefinite leave to remain in the UK. So that's permanent residency and the application has come back unsuccessful and she's basically been told to leave the UK. So basically this nurse has worked in this country for five years. She applied obviously for permanent residence and you know, it was not granted. They refused to give her this particular visa. And so now she needs to leave the UK. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about can nurses, carers, you know, students, and just people with visas, work visas in the UK, can you work extra shifts? If you can work extra shifts in the UK, what are the rules that you must follow if you're working extra shifts? Because look, this particular thing about extra shifts is something that is in has been highly contested by many people. There's a lot of confusion. Many people don't know what the rules are with regards to whether they can work extra shifts or not. And if they can, what counts as extra shifts? What does not count? So if you are interested in this and you want to know exactly where you stand, you don't want this to happen to you, then I urge you to watch this video till the end because I'm going to be explaining to you in detail the implications of this, what the law says, what is expected of you and what is expected of your employer with regards to working extra shifts. Again, if you're new to the channel, it's so beautiful to have you here. If you're a returning subscriber, um, I'm so grateful. I appreciate your time and the fact that you take this time to watch these videos. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do hit subscribe. Turn on that notification button because you want to be the first to be notified when I drop a video on here every single day. Because I'm all about career progression. In case you're wondering who I am, and by the way, it's our first time meeting. My name is Melvis. I work for the NHS in England as an advanced nurse practitioner. I also have a private coaching service where I support nurses, carers, student nurses with career progression in the UK. So if you're looking for the best job in the UK, you're just like, oh my goodness, I'm a carer. I just want to move to the next stage. I want to progress into nursing or whatever you want. Then you need to check out my coaching program. If you're a nurse, you just want to be more efficient because sometimes career progression it's not just about getting senior positions. It's about you getting comfortable, you know, where you are, you getting that confidence that you need, you understanding the policies in this country, which is very relevant to this video, because if you're part of my private coaching program, then obviously during our weekly live sessions, we talk about all these things. So obviously this will not be happening to you if you're part of it, because you will know what the rules are. You will know what is expected of you and we'll make sure that we give you the right orientation that you need. So if you're not part of that program, you want to make sure you check it out. Um, but I'm going to be giving you all that information obviously in this video so let's get started so this nurse basically has worked for five years and the reason why she was not given um the permanent residence to remain in the uk is that she worked too many extra hours than she was supposed to work so just just to put a bit of context before we continue so if you're in the uk on a skilled worker visa so as a nurse or as a carer this visa means that if you have it say for the first time if you have it for three years many people normally have it for for three years you know first so if you have it for three years you're only allowed to renew the visa once you only got one more chance to renew that visa after three years once you renew it you get given another three years so that's a total of six years that's the maximum that you can stay on this particular visa once you get to six once you get to the fifth year for example you're then eligible to apply for permanent residence in the uk if after five years you apply for permanent residence in the UK, if you're granted, then you're free from any immigration rules that we're going to be talking about. So you can do whatever you want. You can leave your employer. You don't need sponsorship to be able to remain in the UK. So for the first five years that you're in the UK, you know, you cannot become a permanent resident until, you know, after five years, then you can apply. And once you get that permanent residence, is such a huge relief you are then considered as well as a home student if you want to study you want to do anything you're going to be considered the same as somebody who has a british citizenship even though you know you just have permanent residency so it's a huge difference because you will be considered as a home student for fee payment purposes so that's why it's so important but what happens if after five years you apply and you're not granted or you choose not to apply? Because that's something that some people ask me. What if I choose not to apply after five years? If you choose not to apply after six years, once it, it expires, because you can no longer renew it, you have to leave the UK, for example, you know, because if you don't want to apply for permanent residency, you cannot renew that work visa again after that. So you will need to leave or, you know, whatever it is you want to do. 
But if you apply and you're unsuccessful, you also will need to leave because you don't have any other visa once that one expires. Like this nurse now, she's found herself in this predicament where she needs to leave the UK um, because obviously she doesn't have that permanent residency and she cannot extend her current visa because she's already had that extension for six years right now. So when it comes to extra work, can nurses and carers do extra work in the UK? The answer is yes, you know, as a nurse or carer, you can do extra work. But what I'm going to say to you is you need to assess your capability. You need to assess your personal circumstance because no two people are the same. Yes, you may come to the UK at the same time with somebody, that person's level of experience, that level of competence, their level of confidence may be different from yours. So if that person starts doing extra shift after one year, for example, it doesn't mean that you need to start doing extra shift after one year as well. If that person can do extra shift after three months, it doesn't mean that you can do extra shifts after three months. Because what I'm thinking is if you've trained overseas and you come to the UK, you need time to be able to acclimatize to the place. You need time to understand the culture in this country. You need time to understand the rules. You need time to understand policies. Because look, the law does not pardon any ignorance. If you make mistakes because you don't know what is expected, nobody's going to forgive you for that. You're going to go down and be in a lot of trouble. And that's why it's good to take time to understand what is expected. Because look, when you get to the UK, nobody's going to sit you down and say, Melvis, now you're in the UK. We expect A, B, C, D, E from you. Nobody does that. But you have to be seen to be doing the right thing always. And you need to be heard saying the right things always. But like I say, nobody's going to come policing you and telling you that this is what you need to do. So you need to be very careful because the laws are going to be followed till the latter when things go wrong so with extra shift what the law actually says is that if you have a skilled worker visa if you come to the uk with a skilled worker visa you are not allowed to work more than 20 hours a week you know you are not allowed to work more than 20 hours a week in a job that is outside you know outside of your um certificate of sponsorship obviously number which means that if you come as a nurse for example so you can work 20 or carer obviously you can work 20 extra hours but that job that you're doing the 20 hours in it has to be the same code as your nursing which means that you can do that in nursing obviously that's what it means and also that particular job you cannot do more than 20 hours per week if you look at the fact that in nursing the shifts are say 12 hours if you do one extra shift a week, that's already 12 hours. If you happen to do two extra shifts in one week, that's 24 hours. That means that in the whole five years that you're on that visa, you don't have to ever do more than 20 hours per week to be on the safe side. That's what this means. Which means that if you're doing an extra shift, you can do, say, one long shift per week, for example, and then one, say, early shift or late shift. Because if you do that, then it's going to be about 20 hours. But if it goes to 21 hours, you've gone against immigration rules. And look, if you, if an immigration officer looks at it and says, oh, Melvis, you worked 21 hours on this day. So we're not going to give you the visa. They have a valid reason. You cannot say, but it's only one hour. The whole point is that you've gone against that particular immigration rule. So you want to make sure that you're keeping these rules to the latter. Because yes, there are people that may go against the rule and come out scot-free. But you don't know whether you're going to be the scapegoat that gets, you know, the visa rejected. So what I will say is you don't want to get into any illegality while you're here. You want to make sure that you're keeping everything real. You want to make sure that you're legit. Because it's not that people are not going to know. You know, it's easy to know that from your national insurance contributions. Again, it's something that people don't understand. So when you're working in the UK, you're paying national insurance. If they look at how much you're paying for national insurance, it is also reflected. And also, when you're on a, on a visa in the UK, you know, there is that account that your employer needs to keep of all your activities. Because when you're working, it is all recorded, you know. All the hours you're working are all recorded because this is obviously legit work from legit employers. So whether you're doing bank shifts, which are extra shifts that nurses can do within their own place of work, or you're doing agency, which is where you apply to an external agency to work extra shifts, those hours are all recordable. So it is not something that is hidden or you say because you're doing agency work, then your employer isn't aware. 
for example. The, the whole point is that those hours are recorded. So you need to be very, 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 very careful with those rules and with those laws. Is there any instance, for example, again, this is something that I get asked. Is there any instance where you can do extra work outside of nursing if you're a nurse or a carer or any other visa? It applies, is the same rule for all visas. Is there any instance where you can do more than 20 hours? So if you want to work more than 20 hours a week or you want to work in, you know, those extra shifts in a job that is not um, what you have the sponsorship for, you need to make sure that that new job gives you a certificate of sponsorship. Mm -hmm. You need another certificate of sponsorship again. That's a legal way to do it. Once you get that certificate of sponsorship, you then need to apply to the immigration services for a new visa. That's a legal way. And just to put this into a bit of context, let's say I come to the UK as a nurse. I've got a skilled worker visa as a nurse. And I see a job in IT that I want to do my 20 extra hours in IT instead of nursing. So you need to go to your IT employer, tell them that you need a certificate of sponsorship. When they give you a certificate of sponsorship, you then need to apply to the immigration services and say, look, I came to the UK as a nurse. I've got this visa as a nurse. I'm doing my job as a nurse. But from now hence, I want to work 20 extra hours in IT because it's legal for me to work extra hours. But obviously, because IT is a different industry and a different sector from nursing, they are going to give you that special visa so they can do both jobs. That's how it works. That's a legal way. But if you're coming as a nurse or a carer, you can't just get a job in IT. Even, even if it's extra work and you're still working as a nurse or carer, it's illegal to do that. And if you do that, they can actually have seen instances where the certificate of sponsorship has actually been revoked and the visa cancelled. And there's more and more of those cases happening right now. This is a very serious issue. You must take this seriously because I can't count how many people say to me, Melvis, you know, I'm still out of the UK, but I'm just wondering when can I start working extra shifts? As, as exciting as the money may seem, as exciting as the process may seem, it is a very risky business when you begin to work extra shifts and you're not ready because you're dealing with human beings, you know, with the job that we do. If you make mistakes, the implications of those mistakes are very, very high and you're going to pay very dearly for that. You know, I don't even want to think about the risk to patients because I am somebody who I don't think that working extra shifts is actually safe for healthcare professionals. Personally, for me, from my own experience that I've seen, and the impact that extra shifts have because a job in itself as it is is incredibly stressful just working your normal hours which means that if you have to work even extra hours on top of that it becomes even more stressful but at the same time i understand the need for staff to work extra hours because if you have more responsibility like you've moved to the uk you've spent so much money moving here you know and you just want to pay some of that money back or you're just trying to survive in this country and you need extra hours you still need to be careful and make sure you're doing that within the law you're doing that legally because otherwise you're going to find yourself you know later on in the future in a lot of trouble and again remember that everything is recorded nobody's going to come and chase you up and say oh melvis don't do this extra shift but it, it is all counted you know, so again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do hit subscribe, turn on that notification button because I want to make sure that you get, you know, those videos when I post them every day. I also want you to leave the comment below and say, Melvis, I will implement this because I want to know that you're willing and ready to do the right thing. I want to know that you're committed to this course so that you're legal, you know, you're doing things legally and there's no illegality at all. So I want you to leave a comment in the comment section and say, Melvis, I will implement so that you know, there's that accountability that we're giving to each other. You're giving me your word. You know, I'm giving you my own word that I'm going to chase you up and be like, hey, I hope everything is going on well. You know, how are you getting on in the UK with this, you know, job thing and all of that? So you want to make sure that, you know, you leave that comment saying, Melvis, I will implement. So again, back to the extra hours. So if you're doing extra hours, therefore, you know, how does it work if you do extra hours? There are even more laws. So there's another law, which is more about employment law. So remember that there are so many laws that actually govern our practice, you know, as human beings. There are laws that are to protect the employer and there are laws that are to protect us as employees. So, you know, so that there's no abuse, you know, and people are not overworked. But what these laws mean, obviously, is that if you go against them, again, you can get into a whole lot of trouble, which obviously none of us want to be in.
So this law is called the working time directive. So the working time directive actually says that um, you should not work more than an average of 48, you know, 48 hours per week. But this doesn't end there. It's over a period of 17 weeks. This means that if you're a nurse and you're normal, say with the NHS, for example, if your normal full time hours um, is obviously working 37 and a half hours a week. If you do one extra shift, how many hours is that in a week? You see that that's already 48 hours in the week, which means that legally, if you work one extra shift a week, you've already met that maximum that you are allowed to do, you know, by law, which means that legally we should not be doing more than 48 hours, you know, in a week. So if you have to do more than that per week, UK employers have a form that you need to sign to exempt yourself from that particular law. And I've seen nurses say to me, but Melvis, I've signed this particular form so that protects me and it enables me to be able to work extra hours. But that form is not there to protect you to work extra hours. That form is protecting your employer to, to, to say that if you do anything wrong, you are taking on the responsibility. You're aware that you should not work more than 48 hours per week, but actually you've decided that you're going to go against this particular law and you're going to work more than 48 hours per week. So if anything does happen or go wrong to you or with you or while you're at work, then you are taking full responsibility. That's what you're signing. You're not signing to protect yourself. You're signing to protect the employer for when things go wrong. Again, you need to be very aware of this. Some employers make every employee to sign this during induction. Some employers, you have to request the form yourself if you're working more hours. And that's why with many employers, say like with the NHS, for example, if you join the bank to work extra shifts, you can, they have a system where you can book the shift yourself online. But if you book so many, because the system is set up such that it controls how many hours we're working, which is fantastic. So if you've worked, the maximum hours that you're allowed to work, that system does not let you, you know, to do any extra hours. Because if you try to book any extra shift, an alert is going to come up and say, hey, Melvis, you're not allowed to book any more shifts because you've exceeded the number of hours that you're allowed to work. So that's something that is there to protect the employer and protect us so that we can work safely. So when you're going against that, you're just, like I said, you're just signing to say, you know about this law, but you're going to go against it to work more. Obviously, when problems do arise, then you're on your own, really. And this links beautifully to the NMC. So the Nursing and Midwifery Council is a nursing regulator, nursing midwifery, and nursing associate regulator in England. Um, basically, if you get referred to the NMC, and look, so many nurses get referred all the time. Um, if you're working extra hours, whether as a bank or agency, you're more likely to be referred to the NMC. And I personally think that because these nurses tend to do so many extra hours, it puts you more at risk. Not just because you're at risk because of any other reason. It's because the job is so stressful that when you're doing all these extra hours, it puts more pressure on you. And because you've got more pressure on you, you're more likely to make mistakes. That's the whole truth because, you know, and when you're referred to the NMC, therefore, there are many NMC hearings. If you're somebody who is familiar with the NMC's processes, mostly what happens is that when these nurses are referred, the NMC, the first thing that they'll say is, look, you're not allowed to work any extra hours in any other job except the place where you're working. So there are many nurses that NMC actually says that to, and they put it in writing and you, and as a nurse, you're not allowed to work any extra hours except your contracted hours with your current employer. And that's because when you're referred to the NMC, for example, because of mistakes or whatever, they look at the, the number of hours you're doing because there's extensive research supporting the fact that working extra shifts, you're likely to make more mistakes. And I think this is definitely true because just doing your normal hours in nursing is very, very challenging. So having to do any more extra shifts you're likely to make mistakes. So you need to be aware of all these implications. You need to make sure that you're aware that everything is being recorded that you do. Um, it's not that somebody has to report you for it to happen, but there are systems in place in the UK to monitor our practice. And one of the reasons people are, you know, people get struck off by the NMC 
is because they're working so many extra hours they're very stressed out likely to make mistakes when you make mistakes and you're referred and they find out that actually you've been working six six shifts a week um it's very very risky it's very very risky so if you're working extra shifts you need to be careful if you're working in a nursing home for example and they're giving contracts because i know nursing homes for example that are giving contracts to people for 48 hours per week the reason why they do it for 48 hours is because that is a legal maximum number of hours that you're allowed to do in a week which means that if you're working in a nursing home and your contract is 48 hours per week if you do one extra shift anytime you're already outside of that working time directive because if you do one extra shift and your normal working hours are 48 hours a week then you've gone against that working directive so you need to be very careful about your contracts as well make sure you read your contract thoroughly make sure that you're looking how many hours you're contracted for because again if you're in a nursing home where you're having 48 hours per week you know as your normal contract legally you should not be working any more extra hours at all not even a single one because if you were one extra hour that goes to 49 hours which you know is not legal except you sign that form and when you're signing that form again you're saying that you're taking responsibility for anything that goes wrong so you want to make sure that you're understanding the legal part of working as a nurse or as a carer or as somebody with a visa in the uk because what's happened to this nurse um, is something that is very common and with the with the carer visa right now i can already look Four, five years, six years from now, many people are going to be in this situation because people are all over the place doing different jobs. They are like, hey, I'm in the UK now. I'm free. They take all kinds of jobs to do. It does not work. You can only work extra hours in a job that has the same code as your own job or on the shortage occupation list. That is the law. You can't just do any number of hours that you want. Neither can you just work for any employer that you want. So you need to do that legally. Because like I say, with carers, I can see four, five, six years from now, there are going to be so many people that will apply for British, um, you know, for that permanent residency and it will not be granted because of various, um, you know, offences. Not necessarily intentional offences, but things that people are just doing genuinely. And that's why I always advocate for career progression. The best way to earn more money is to progress in your career. Because when you progress, you can earn more without the need to do extra hours. That's why I advocate for this. If you have to rely on working extra hours in order to earn more, you keep exposing yourself to a lot of risk. But if you focus your time and energy to progress, you know, to progress and keep excelling, then you're going to earn a lot more, but still maintaining you know, those hours within the law so that you can earn a lot more. You know, again, you know, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do hit subscribe, turn on the notification button because I do a lot of content like this. I know that, you know, this is something that you probably don't want to hear. This is something that you're just like, oh my God, Melvis, you know, this doesn't sound very good, but this is the law. This is the reality. This is the truth. You know, this is the law of the land, which we all have to follow. You know, whether we agree with it or not, unfortunately, it is what it is. But I do agree with these rules because I think that we're supposed to be protected. And with the job that we do, it's so delicate. If you're working extra hours, it is not safe, neither for you nor for your patients. It is not safe for anybody because you're likely to make more mistakes. That is true, you know, and those mistakes are likely going to be really, 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 really dangerous with a very dangerous outcome. So you need to be careful, make sure you get the confidence that you need, make sure they get to understand, you know, how things work in the UK, make sure that, you know, you are keeping a good circle of people around you that can guide you, that can advise you, that understand the law, because if all the people in your circle, you know, are just like you and they're not aware of what to do, then you're more likely to, to, to do the wrong things as well. Not because you want to, but just because you don't know. And like I say, the law does not pardon any ignorance. If you don't know something, you're not, they're not going to say, oh, Melvis, you know, you just came from um, Cameroon two days ago. We're going to forgive you because we know that you're not aware. No. They're going to be like, what? If you didn't know, you should have asked, which rightfully you should be doing. So please, please, let's make sure that we're doing things properly. Let's make sure that, um, you know, I want you to be able to, to, to excel, to succeed. I want that. 
five years from now, two years from now, three years from now, one year from now, however long from now you've got to apply for that indefinite leave to remain in the UK, you know. And by the way, in case um, I didn't actually mention this, if you apply for that indefinite leave to remain, which is a permanent residence in the UK, once it's granted, you've only got one year after that to apply for a British passport if you want so one year from when you have your indefinite leave to remain granted you can become a british citizen and look it is something that is amazing because you're free from all those immigration rules if you want to travel you know that's the main difference that passport has that indefinite leave does not have so with indefinite leave you're considered as a home student for fee payment purposes and for certain entitlements that you would normally have um or not have as somebody on a skilled worker visa but what the passport really does that citizenship is give you access to traveling you know visa free because as a uk as a british citizen how many countries can you go visa free you know that's a big difference that it has so you want to make sure that you are doing everything legit keep watching those videos if there's anything you're not sure about you can always ask me if you're part of my private coaching program then obviously our meetings every week we go through all this in detail so to make sure that you know you're doing things the right way because we don't want you to, to get caught up in all of this um you know unnecessary inconveniences so again keep watching the video subscribe to the channel turn on the notification button because you want to be the first to be notified i want you to leave a comment below and say melvis i will implement you know like the video if you like such content because then i'll know that you're enjoying content like this and i can do more because like i say i only do videos that people are requesting depending on whatever is going on um because i just want it to be relevant to you so keep watching